T.O. please. Hey there, this is T.O. bringing another Kerbal Space Program video, and it has been too long since my last video. Uh, ordinarily, I'll go a long time without a recording just because I get busy, but in this case, I actually have a valid excuse, in a sense. My, uh, my gaming headset got destroyed by the pets. One of the dogs, I believe, chewed through the cable, so I've been without a decent microphone for a while now, and tonight my wife splurged and got me a, a really nice, uh, dedicated microphone, so hopefully this one will last a while. Anyway, as you can see on screen, I am constructing a rocket to go up around Kerbin and access Kerbnet to hopefully find some anomalies. So anomalies are pretty cool features of KSP. They're all over the Kerbal system, and they can be anything from uh, ground <clears throat> ground stations for the curb net to things like monoliths or statues or just you know Easter eggs in general that the developers have placed all over the place. Some of them are on Kerbin, some of them are on the Mun. Like I said, they're all over the Kerbal system. So I plan on using this uh, reusable rocket. So it's gonna ascend and descend all in one stage. I've got some parachutes on the top that'll help it slow down, but it's going to land on engine power at the very last second just to slow itself down. But uh, the main feature that this rocket has that it would need to access Kerbnet is a um, it's a probe core. Pretty much all the probe cores have the ability of accessing Kerbnet. The rule of thumb is the more expensive, more advanced probe cores have better Kerbnet features. Things like wider field of view and higher percent chance of detecting anomalies and that sort of thing. But there you see I just clicked on the probe core and that's the curb net now that's open. So the large probe core that I'm using has, I think, the widest field of view and one of the highest chances to spot anomalies, which is why I chose it. So there you see I'm in the biome map view. There's three different map views up in the top corner of curb net and the biome one will allow you to see and it'll name the biomes directly under the craft, which is really nice if you want to pinpoint a landing zone in a unique biome, or uh, I use it because it, it looks like the map that I'm flying over. So I just I just like that look. The other map that's really helpful is topographic, and it will give you uh, the altitudes that you're flying directly over in case you wanted to pinpoint a high landing zone for conserving fuel, or maybe a flat landing zone for a base or that sort of thing. But Main thing I'm doing is toggling the um, the field of view every now and then I'll adjust because I don't know the, the math behind the percent chance of finding anomalies. Um, I also don't know how my altitude affects the anomaly detection percent chance. So I just set this altitude and uh, I kind of occasionally will change the field of view. But uh, for the most part, I feel like it's there's a, a good bit of chance in locating these anomalies. Another thing that I did to improve my chances was I set an inclined orbit. You know, this is not a typical equatorial orbit that I would go with, but that inclination means I'm passing over a different part of the planet every rotation. So if I'm missing an anomaly because I'm not flying over one, well then in the next pass, hopefully I'll fly over one. You know, that's the, the theory anyway. So, um, yeah, it's uh, somewhat a game of chance, but... They're there, you can find them, and to me, you know, it adds a layer of complexity and fun to the game. So there you see on the map, that little question mark is an anomaly. So I'm going to go ahead and tag it. Uh, I named that waypoint, so I can select that from the map view of any of my crafts. So this craft is not designed to go and find the anomaly now and, and visit it. It was just um, designed to detect the anomaly and mark it on the map. So... In, the, in my next video, I will be flying to that location with a more suitable craft and getting out and walking around and checking out what it could be. Like I said, on Kerbin, there's uh, there's quite a lot more. I think Kerbin has the most of all the different celestial bodies. Um, so I've got some ideas of what it would be. Actually, I already know what it is because I've obviously already filmed that footage, but <laughs> uh, it, was, it was fun the first time discovering it. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I hope to see you in the next video. Please uh, leave a comment if you have anything to say. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you have not already. I appreciate you for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time.